Hello and welcome back, Maruma. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more Phrygia in Imperator, Im Imperator, Im Imperator, Imperator, something like that. I don't know, whatever. So, um, I was looking around a little bit at the uh, the regions here. So we've got uh, this guy is seventy years old. He's one of our governors, Antigonos Dokimos Dokimid, and he has the cancer, uh, the Gideon cancer, probably. So he's dying, um, and he's also quite bad. His his uh, finesse is down by two. He used to have six. Four is quite bad. So you know how we reward a lifetime of service by finding someone else. <laughs> so we're gonna have this guy do it. Um, he's got the scholar personality effects if governor research points plus ten, and he's got eight finesse. So, Gretz, you're now the guy that's in charge. Also, when you do that, he might change the. Um, the governor policy for all of the places that he's controlling. So the previous guy had everyone set to this local autonomy thing, and he just changed to religious conversion, acquisition of wealth, encourage trade, religious conversion, um, etc. So that's, I think, going to be better than what we had before. Might also affect our research a bit, having that uh, researcher trade on there. Just check to see if anyone else is using a whole bunch of like autonomy stuff that I don't like. So, there's a couple here with autonomy. It's this guy. He's got quite good stats. But, um... You know... I'm not gonna pay the oratory power to make him switch. But... I gotta say... That guy's got nine. Wow. Wow. He's got two of them on local autonomy and a couple of them on cultural simulation. Two of them on borderlands, which gives fort defense and manpower. I guess I'm okay with that for now, but it'd be great if they would use other things. One thing you can do, which is interesting to me, take a look at these are what he's currently using. Watch what happens if we just, you know, fire him and then reappoint him. Notice how he's changed all of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you go and you look at his loyalty, and it's totally fine. At one point in the past, firing the governor would make them disloyal. Now there is no penalty, and you can just do this over and over again if you really wanted to, until they use the things that you want. Bleed them dry, national unrest plus two. Not so sure I like that, but um, I guess because of the local troops, he just feels that he can. I mean, it does give national commerce and local tax income. Not national, sorry, just commerce income, local tax income, quite a bit. Um, and he's got encouraged trade on now. So, you know, I mean, I'm not going to, like, min-max it and do it 300 times until he does the exact policies that I want, but theoretically you could. All right, our omen is halfway through, so we don't really need to get this omen power yet, unless we want to try to prepare for the next one. Let's do um, military tech investment. And I think what I'm going to do is we're going to grab, I'm going to grab this 10 stack, turn them off of that. Let's grab our navy. We're going to tell it to be, uh, this is something I haven't actually talked about or used yet. There's this button here called select unit objective. Units can be assigned various objectives, which are the try to fulfill without direct player interaction. So you can tell them to be independent operations, which basically turns them into an AI controlled army. Um, you can do that for land units and sea units. I'm going to use this one called Naval Landing. This is how you use um, Autonomous Fleet Transportation. So we're going to do that, and then if we tell them to go to our province over here, they're going to use the ships to just go over there automatically. I King Abdahada offers friendship. Sure, friends are nice. I like friends. This was our 10 military guy anyway, so we might want to send him over there as well. Um, for now, I'm going to send this army up to like one of the ports nearby. I'm not going to train any more troops just because we're not near the manpower cap and it would just cost us more money and economically I think we're doing alright. We could be building more buildings, which I do think is worthwhile. Let's find the next highest city with lots of citizens in it. That has room for stuff. Um, got a local autonomy policy here. See, like, I don't like that. Like, would you, would you please not do that?
use a better one. Like, say, yeah. Civilization effort. That sounds good. Try to civilize the nearby barbarians. I like that. Okay, um... Just get a few marketplaces going in a few different places, just that we're using the money. Okay, that army is now in position. The navy will return to whatever province or city that it was in before it took on the action. We have military access through some of this land. Yeah, let's actually, yeah, let's go down a little bit closer. I want to be near Sparta. Economically, we're doing so well, we could also just run um, higher maintenance. Let's turn on fleet maintenance as well so that we're ready for a potential war here. Getting really close to being able to declare a war. Potentially. Ten troops is not very many, so I'd kind of like to get a few extra on that border. Um, I mean, we could, we could try to build an army composition that's like custom tailored around having the, uh, the best possible number of tactics available, but against the AI, I just don't think it's necessary. Uh, the one that really comes to mind to me is um, because cavalry provide 150% effectiveness to deception, um, you could potentially run like 66% light cav and then maybe one third heavy infantry. And then you'd have access to most actions at a pretty good ratio. But that would make them all move at that heavy infantry movement speed. So I really just like having lots of light cav right now. It feels very strong to me. So let's pull off um, some more light cav. I want like a 20 stack over there. A foreigner has arrived, apparently. That's 11. Alright, we'll go with the 21 stack, sure. Let's just check supply, make sure that we're okay to put that army there. We're, we're fine. And bam, just like that, we now have a claim. Let's check to see if the political situation's changed at all. We'd have to wait a month before declaring. Hey, someone just asked my vegetables. Finally! Uh, so this guy, if we attack him, we're still fighting Troizen. So Sparta's got nine cohorts, 11,000 manpower. Megalopolis has seven cohorts. This guy's got two cohorts. And Gortina's got four cohorts. So that's going to look like some of this. That's Troizen. Megalopolis was this guy right here. So we're just going to declare the war because all the people involved are going to be very weak. And then what we want to do is focus on knocking them out one by one uh, in the order of non-co-belligerency. Like, take out the non... Take, take out the secondary participants first. Preferring people who have low fort level because they'll be easier to siege. So troizen has got a level 2 fort in his capital. Sparta's got a level 2 fort. Megalopolis is a level 2 fort. Uh, we would also be fighting... Gort... Gort... Nina, who's got a level 2 fort. They all have level 2 forts. Okay, in that case... Um, we might want to bring an extra couple troops just so that we can do multiple sieges on level 2 forts. Do have any more light cav over here? limits better there anyway. Let's um Alright, I think we're ready to just declare this war then. Uh, we have a second 10 level 10 uh, military commander down here. 
But I need to get him unappointed. Interesting that I can unappoint him even though the troops were loyal to him. Weird. Alright, in that case we'll put him in charge of this. Nope, never mind. Alright, so because of that other loyal army, you cannot remove a leader that has been assigned to a unit until at least 12 months have passed. He has can be assigned again 15th of June of next year. Okay, but I didn't actually just assign him. Eh, whatever. New invention, we'll do, um, let's go ahead and take the omen power before I forget, for the future. And we're going to still keep these guys on auto fleet, naval landing, let's declare the war. We already have quite a bit of aggressive expansion, so we're not going to take too much land, I think. While we're at war, we don't get the inherent decay of current aggressive expansion, but it does still go down by our epic... Epiproxenos. So we are losing 0.1 a month, but we're missing out on quite a bit of the, quite a bit of the rest. So I'm just gonna take this whole army out of Troizen for now. Where are you going, fleet? Let's switch over to uh, Phalanx because it's gonna counter shock action if they're using that. We instantly overran it, which is good. Let's get the rest of these troops over there. Can we assign that other 10 guy yet? No. You're gonna have to wait the whole year, apparently. Trade influx. Strike the earth and gain citizens? Yes, I want citizens. I want tech. Okay, so we could keep 25 troops here. We're suffering 5% attrition because we're over the supply limit, though. Which is bad. Um, it's gonna cost us a bit this month. Let's just do split in half, which is actually the H button in this game, for some reason. Um, let's pull... We'll pull 12 off. Sorry, 13 off. 14 off, in fact. Um, and then I want these guys to go and work on... Probably in Sparta directly, because that's the goal. I need you to be on naval landing. And I wanted that 10 siege... or that 10 pip leader. I don't know if I want to wait till June for that. Um, we'll just go with a five for now. Let's make sure that we have fort maintenance on just in case anyone tries to siege me down anywhere. Do you have a port? So they got the level two fort. Looking at the siege, there is no port. Not every sea tile Adjacent city has a port. Only the ones that have that little indicator there have ports and need to be blockaded. And then and then it's only if they actually have a uh, part of Sparta, but occupied by Haraya. Haraya? Haraya. Who is Haraya? And how did he get there ahead of me? Sneaky bastard. Okay, we've got zone of control to deal with here, so it's blocking us from getting to this island. So they might block me from actually conquesting this thing. Veterans do. After wars, toil, and hardship, it is with hopeful eyes that the veterans of our armies look forward, look toward retirement. A life of rural farming with promised farmland often parceled out due to the, uh, to the most deserving. Okay, you do not have enough farmlands to please our veterans, but giving them what we have may assuage their anger. Uh, gain loyalty, lose morale of armies, lose morale of armies, lose 1,300 ducats. Okay, let's just do this one.
Okay, that is owned by somebody else. We are not hostile to them. I guess if this guy is going to come and occupy land that I was otherwise going to take, then, uh... We get the 10 Siege Pip guy yet, please. I really want him. June 15th. Alright, I'm gonna keep him without an army for now. And we're gonna go siege out this guy next. I don't think there's any risk of anyone coming to try to siege us. This is a very straightforward, easy war, I think. Somebody just threatened war. Someone wants our stuff. There is a 7 stack there, so our troops need to be led by a general fairly soon. That is a level 2 fort with a port? No. That is a capital, no port. So even though they have... Yeah, there, there are just are no ports. You don't have to worry about blockading or anything. Unlike in EU4, you can assign generals in hostile territory, which is weird. Takes some getting used to. There we go. There's our guy. Enslavement efficiency plus 13%. He also has plus two commander impact on the siege. Zone of control for Sparta is returning control of that. Looks like we're actually maybe going to be able to do that then. The sacking of Troizen. Demetrius and Tigonid has led his men into glorious victory during the siege of Troizen. The enemy flee in disgrace and all that is left is to decide how to treat the residents within. So Demetrius and Tigonid, that's us. We are one of the people with 10 siege pips. Uh, we are the guy who is here. So we have an option right now to pick up a trait. If we do this, we kill a bunch of dudes, but we gain the trait Cruel. Cruel, I found to be very good. Uh, options are... He, personally, not the country, gains 10 gold, and he gains 5 popularity. Or he gains 15, or he gains 25. We are also killing citizens, or killing freemen. And we're making troops loyal to us. So we're going to do this to make ourselves Cruel. Because Cruel is good. We lose Charisma, which is unfortunate, but... Enslavement efficiency plus three. Local slave output if you're a governor, which we are, because we are... You are always the governor of your capital region. So if you look at regions... In the region of Syria, we have 605 population. And with that trait, we've just gained... Governor effect, local slave output plus 10%. So if you look at any of our slaves, they now have... Demetrius Antigonid plus 10% output. On top of that... When you are the ruler, which we also are, that gives 5% national slave output. So outside of our region, up here, our slaves now have Basilius plus 5. So cruel is great. We love being great. You know, we love being so cruel. Um, yeah, I like cruel. Cruel is a good trait. Characters with this trait will be more likely murder their way to the top. Indeed. All right, let's send this guy over to here now. Uh, Troizen, we can sue for peace. We can just do a separate piece. It's 0.91 aggressive expansion impact. Conquer's land. We can also take all of his money, and uh, why not? The Troizenian elites. Um, we could theoretically, like, pass judgment on important families and try to, like, pull people with good stats or something, but we're just going to banish them to keep the aggressive expansion down a little bit. Because we are going to be conquering some stuff. Troizen has exactly one whole population, and they're kind of happy, so it's fine. Time for a new invention, Humane Conduct. Uh, let's take... Let's take learning on the job now. Okay, that is 15 troops. This is the coalition force of Megalopolis and Sparta. They've got a pretty good mix of unit types. Three heavy infantry, nine light infantry, and four archers. This is predicting that it is very likely that our side will win, because we have a better commander, we have better quality, the train is to our benefit, uh, however their army has higher morale than ours. I believe that is comparing current morale. We can do that um, to turn this on. We're still using Phalanx. Uh, we are leaving this location on the 9th, they are arriving on the 20th. So, 
Um, let's go ahead and fight them. Okay, so we have far superior or far far reduced numbers. They used bottleneck. I, again, I think that you have to have a general in charge in order for them to choose that. So equal on tactics. What that means then is that neither of us gets any benefit. Um, we ended up taking the penalty because we're apparently no longer the defenders. So what we're going to do then is just retreat after five days have passed. Because I don't want to be taking this negative two penalty and I also don't want to be using a tactic that doesn't work. Uh, where did the fleet go? Alright, terrain-wise, we can retreat into these hills. Or can we not? We cannot. There is no port there, so we can't dock up. This is also hills behind a strait. They were using the uh, bottleneck strait uh, tactic, so we want to use something that counters bottleneck if we can. Skirmishing is the only option that we can. Um, even though it's only going to give us a 5% damage bonus against it, it'll also give them a minus 10% damage against us for using... Um, skirmishing would deal 5% against bottleneck. Bottleneck. Yeah, so hyena. They would take minus 10% against Hyena. So we'll do that because it's a 15% swing. If they try to cross this, we should be alright. In the meantime, I'd like to maybe pull... ...some of these troops over. And we need some time to recover morale. So, um... The city owner needs to be us. So, if you are in your own held land, you can use this thing called unit reorganization. Spend five mil military points in order to reduce your army's movement speed, gain 25% increased reinforcement speed, and 10% more morale recovery. It doubles the maintenance cost of the army while you're doing it, though. So, in the location that we're in right now, we only recover 12% morale per month. Morale recovery is much slower in this game than it is in Europe Universal 4, which has like a default of 20 to 25 in controlled territory. So, reorganization taking you from 12 to 22 is a huge, huge increase. You could get your morale back much, much faster. What we're going to do is just get a few more troops and we should be alright. Um, I don't want to try to take that yet. We'll wait until we have the extra troops over. And we're making pretty good progress in the siege. Nice water shortage. We have a few. A few of our cohorts are getting loyal. Giving them that extra bonus discipline. Paying the troops a lot right now, but it's fine. We've got plenty of economy. Lots of money coming in. We've won another siege. Let's have this army go over to... Here, uh, I don't believe we're going to be able to get military access because we have negative opinion due to aggressive expansion. Makes it difficult to get through places. Um, I don't have access here. Unlike in European Universal 4, where if you are at war with someone and they have military access, you can get military access automatically. They can freely hide in an adjacent province, so I can't go there. We'll just need to, you know, do other stuff. So we're going to conquer his land because, you know, he dared to defend against us. Why on earth are you landing there? No, I said to go here. Once we get over to here, we will auto transport this fleet or this army to there. You have to constantly reset this. If you ever like take control of the navy even for a second, You've got to go and reset it. There are barbarian hordes in our lands. Let's turn on... Um, forced march, unassign. Forced march, unassign. Grab both armies. 
all these armies rather, and let's have them all go up to here. Looks like this army is independent. Uh, let's just combine them. All right, I'm gonna take a short break here. I'll be back in the next episode though. As always, thank you for watching. Hope you guys are enjoying the campaign and I'll see you in the next one. See you soon.